Welcome to downtown Hinsley, Massachusetts for our continuing coverage of the 2015 Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions. For our entire crew and the legendary Frank Face, who's uh, back after a very busy summer. Yes, very busy. Yes. As for it, both of us. That's true. It was. Yes. I'm Kyle Bruce, and we're here to profile four of our uh, three-string matches for the five ladder champions. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Classic Candlepins, welcome to our program. Uh, we've had over a hundred roll-offs to determine these five ladder champions. They're going to be competing in the Tournament of Champions. And today we're going to be featuring the uh, four and five matchup. Um, and this should be a great match. Our number five seed is from Watertown, Massachusetts, Brian Fournier, who uh, Frank threw a 644 to win his roll-off. And it only took a 328 to win his match, but it's enough to get into the tournament. Yeah, uh, fortunately, fortunately for him, uh, his opponent Brian Fuller threw uh, you know, uh, an equally good ball, but it just didn't seem to work for, for either of them, really. Uh, they, they both kind of grounded out. And you could say the same about Tina Ward's match, right. where uh, she came back with a double strike to, to take that fourth seed. And uh, so considering neither of them really threw a, a high strength to win their ladder, perhaps this is their opportunity to kind of display the best in camp and bowling. And I don't think it's out of the question to present Tina as perhaps the best female bowler in the world. Well, I think that, and I've been saying that for a while, um, and I hope that perhaps after this tournament people will get on the bandwagon um, because of not just the kind of ball that she throws, the ball sh that she throws in Amesbury, and the fact that she goes to some of the tougher houses that are around and she's throwing big numbers at Central Park, for example. No question. And I think that helps when you go to different houses like that where you really have to earn it. This is a place where you earn every pin that you throw. So I think this will be a great matchup. Uh, the winner of this particular matchup is gonna face Keith Beaupre next week in the second round matchup. We're gonna go down to the lanes in Amesbury for the opening ceremonies and we'll talk to you in the post-match show. Hope you enjoy it. We want to be a champion, we want the trophy that says champion, and we want to be the first champion, which to me means something. That means a lot. A anyone, everyone on this ladder is, you know, we're all champions, we all made it here, we all threw our best games to get there, and you know, it's anyone's game. No one can't look past anybody in this game because it's just too much can happen. For being a woman, they don't think I can bowl as good as them. Some of them, a lot of them. They know I can bowl, and they get a little bit nervous bowling against me. I knew that, you know, we're friends before the match, and we're friends after the match, but during the match, there's no, you know, you're not friends with anybody during the match. You're bowling your own game and trying to win, and we knew that. There was no, there was no high-fiving, no yelling and rooting for each other or any, or any of that. We just bowled our match. This is the 2015 Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions. And now introducing our five ladder champions. First, from Watertown, Massachusetts, our fifth seed through 644 in winning his roll-off. Number five, Brian Fournier. Our number four seed is from Spencer, Massachusetts. She threw a double strike in the 10th box to win her championship. She might be the best woman in Candlepin bowling today. Number four, Tina Ward. Our number three seed is from Lynn, Massachusetts, and is the winner of the 2015 Summer Knockout. This is Keith Volpray. Our number two seed recently had his high triple increase to 489, and at 20 years of age, might be the best in the world today. Also from Lynn, Massachusetts, number two, Jonathan Boudreau. And the top seed of the Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions threw 380 to win his ladder championship and defeated Dave Godwin and Nick Zuffalato. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one seed of the Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions from Amesbury, Massachusetts, this is Mark Ritchie. Welcome to the 2015 Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to 
The City of Champions, Amesbury, Massachusetts, for the 2015 Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions, along with Rich Lamoni, Frank DeLuca, Scott Moore, our entire crew. We're excited to be here. It's been a long time coming, and it's, uh, we're going to close the book on the 2014-2015 season. And uh, Rich, there's only one way to put it. Uh, the tournament is here. We have our five ladder champions, and um, a lot of storylines that are going to be covered. Could be a heavy favorite, but who's to say? Uh, it's tough to say with five champions. I mean, you know, they all battled to get here, and they're going to battle today. I mean, you have someone in the tournament that threw a double strike to win their match in the last box. So anything can happen. It's going to be exciting to see. Uh, that's a great point. Anything can happen. Um, uh, to me, there is no heavy favorite because anything can happen. Uh, as I said in the introduction, uh, Jonathan Boudreaux could be the best in the world right now. I think Tina is the best woman in Candlepin Bowling. You know, we have uh, a lot of things that are going to be answered right now. And uh, we have a great first-round matchup. We're going to have uh, Tina, who's our fourth seed, go against Brian Fournier. And uh, Brian will throw our first ball right after this timeout. Welcome back to Classic Channel the 2015 Tournament of Champions. We've waited a long time for it. We're closing the book on the season. And this is a profile of our number five seed, Brian Fournier from Watertown. Won the toughest ladder, I believe, Rich. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, I think also believe. Yes. Uh, nice bid, but couldn't carry the eight. Uh, Frank, obviously, is alongside the voice of Ali Chat, and I think one of the best interviews that you did as Brian starts his match off with a 10 box was with Brian and uh, really detailing the change in attitude and confidence and how that affected him in a positive nature uh, last year as he looks at the four horsemen on the right side his best year as a pro absolutely he's made such progress this year <laughs> was right on the object but couldn't carry the 10. It's always it's always fun when you have a teammate that in the middle of the season uh, c comes up to you and apologizes for his poor performance averaging uh, throwing 350s five weeks in a row. I'm just I'm just not cutting it right now. I'm, I'm 351, 358, 353. <laughs> throwing that consistent game every week and complaining about it and that's that's what you need in an anchor and that's and he does that for us that is the nature of brian fournier we just saw the profile of our number four seed tina ward who buried in the pocket and is looking at the five eight and ten with no wood tried to go outside that time and kick the five into the eight and hopefully got the ten but it didn't happen. <laughs> nice bid, but gets a nine out of it. Tina from Spencer, Massachusetts. Quite a long ride to come to the City of Champions for the Tournament of Champions. We have the, the banners, the bunting. Rich is wearing a tie. You're wearing a tie. This is true, yes. I'm wearing a tie pin. That, that's true. Yeah, we'll have to get a shot of that later because Frank is wearing a, a, a custom tie, custom cannel pin. Uh, tie tack. Tie tack. That's the one. Thank you. I was looking for it. Just slid by the object that time. So Tina will be open for the first two. If you haven't seen our program before, Welcome to the broadcast. We feature four three-string scratch matches. And these are the five winners of those ladders as Brian buried it in the pocket and is looking at five, seven, eight, and nine. And just slid by the object that time. Brian threw a 328 in winning his match. 
which was a, a grinder for sure. He defeated Brian Fuller Jr. to win his ladder championship. And that was a bit of a surprise. Not so much that he defeated Fuller, but more so that the, uh, the score it took to beat him. I remember that very clearly, Kyle. It was uh, tough. They did. It's not like any of them bowled, either of them bowled poorly. They were in the pocket. They were hitting their objects. Things just weren't moving. Yeah, the ball, I think, kind of flattened out on, on both of them. There were a lot of, um, there were some punches and splits. That's an eight box. And a slow start right now for, for Fournier as he, one of the accomplishments I remember from the broadcast saying that, from the Alley Chat broadcast, that he averaged 120 on the road on Friday nights. Yes. And that's quite an accomplishment. Absolutely. You know, it seems to me that it, it's, it's always interesting how the conditions of the Alley change. That it's going to be different four hours from now when we're in the final. And pins might be reacting differently because they're going to be pounded all day. Right. So different things are going to happen. Oh, what a bid. Leaves the six. You know, so it is, it's not going to be the same. So we can expect a different match every time. Score that a nine. That'll put Tina at 28 so far. And I also wonder, guys, if maybe sometimes humidity conditions or cold conditions contribute to that sometimes. Fatigue. Fatigue, yes. You know, I mean, if you think about it, if you are in the first match and you go, it hasn't happened yet on our show, but it's happened on other shows, I mean, you're bowling 12 strings, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're bowling in Easter or, you know, in the old Pro Tour or, you know, uh, in the Pro Series where they would have a 10-stringer, um, but it's not, it's not done as much anymore. Right. And um, that can play into it, I believe. You know, you, you get tired, you get sore, uh, you, you try to compensate. Um, and you lose control over what's what you're trying to accomplish here as Tina is 36 after four. Both of our bowlers are looking for their first mark here. Well, I mean, the other thing, too, is you know, you're talking about Easter. Everyone's on a level playing field. Now. Everybody's bowling those strings. Right. You know, if, if Brian runs the ladder, He's bowling 12 strings, and in the finals, he'll be going against Mark, right. who hasn't thrown a ball. Right. So he's going to be rested. So that gives Mark the advantage for being the one seed. Well, who's to say? I mean, it is a, oh, a nice bid, but he couldn't carry the eight. It is an interesting contrast because we've seen, actually, the Friday night team out of Amesbury did not get a bye in the playoffs. And sometimes when you bowl that extra match, you're, it, you're get that momentum, you get a little rhythm going. Mark was on that team, or is on that team, he's the captain of the team, and that proved to be helpful. So sometimes, um, yeah, of course, three strings of the championship for Mark, he's got the shorter road, but sometimes it can uh, be a bit of a benefit to warm up a bit. Try. I mean, it worked out exactly what you're saying last year. Uh, we came in as the 12 seed. We we bowled against uh, Regal and and those guys, and we took them out in the first match, and moved on to the to the number one seed, and we were all over them the first string, and we battled. It was close, and uh, you know we had the momentum early, but they're the number one seed, and they just annihilated us the second the second string. And so, you know, we ended up, what you would want to say, run out of gas. I mean, we just didn't, we didn't have it. Tina's full on the head pin. She has a three and one to look at. And still four pins standing. And that one got away from her. So both of our bowlers searching here to find a rhythm under the lights. 
in the championship. So a little added pressure, of course. Not a little. It's our oh, biggest show. Quite a bit of pressure, yes. Yeah. Nice big and hit in. It's going to be a That's strike. How to get on the board. Kind of a high hit that time, but Tina got it to carry, and we got a nice reaction from the gallery here. And baby split for Fournier as he was able to kick out the pin in the corner. This will be the 2 7. Ooh. Too heavy. And that's going to be a 10. Pinning's important. He's doing well here. He's getting, mm -hmm. he's getting those 10s when he can't convert the marks. By my, by my calculations, he's uh, only left four pins stand, uh, standing. Yes. So far after seven. Push. And he gets, and a, there you go. gets a break gets here. Gets to carry so. that extra pin. So two, four, seven. Wow. No luck. I think yeah. that piece of wood in the back's affected the, the uh, four pin going yes. into the seven pin. Okay, so that's... Uh, 10 box and Tina has an opportunity working on that strike with the two bonus balls to build some separation here. In box is completed, she's uh, trailing by four, but that's the thing, the great thing about this ladder is that any one of these five bowlers can get hot. And look at this. So a one, three, six on the first bonus ball. Very good break hitting the two pin there. Now she throws a great ball. She gets good action off the head pin that time going outside, but the ball broke a little early here. So in completed boxes, she's actually up by three. And a nine box will put her at 68. The winner of this match will face our third seed, Keith Beaupre, who was the final qualifier for our tournament. Light hit. Uh, triple wood, is that what I'm looking at in, the, is, in the channel? You are correct, sir. Wow. That is legal. Yes, that is playable. That if not, I will make it legal. That <laughs> if, if, if she hits, if she hits the cap of that left wood, it's all going to come out of the gutter and probably take everything out. Oh, oh what a bid! Wow. I'm sliding by that time and looking at a one-pin match so far. As we have the beautiful scoreboard created by Scott Moore and manned by a and a strike. Bomb. Again, that was kind of a high hit, but he got the almost was going to be looking at the four six there yeah. for a second. Yeah. Yeah. I, if you noticed, the, uh, the final pins fell upward. He's got another bonus ball here. fill his strike with eight. He's got to be happy with that one. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Wasn't quite the object. Right. And that'll be an eight box, which will conclude his first string with a 102. It's got to feel good getting that first mark, though. Right, I think both of the bowlers do, or did, I should say. Because there's got to be some, some butterflies when you're 
Bowling for trophies, which are made by Din Brothers. Quite impressive. Yes, that they are. Of Holyoke. Yes, that's that's true. <laughs> Tina's looking at the diamond left. He's saying that's impressive for Holyoke? <laughs> well, Kyle mentions that because that those are the folks who made the Channel 5 show. Oh, trophies. I see. For those of you at home. Yes. And for those of you that are not. Yes. Nice check. Today on the lob line, the illustrious Francis W. Stanwood with his green shoes. Yes. He's watching that lob line like a hawk. It's a nice looking ball. Tino, look at the triangle. Three, five, and six. We need, have, to leave we, we need to have call-ins for the show. We should we should call um, Chris Sacchetti and ask him how to make this. I'll leave you to handle that. Just this is his favorite leave. Yes. Hence the sarcasm. It's a tough one. It, it is not as easy as you think it is. And an eight box. We'll give Tina a ninety-five. Trying to get the butterflies worked out of the system here in the first string of the 2015 Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions. Brian Fournier, a seven pin lead over Tina Ward, 102 to 95. And we'll be back with the second string right after this timeout. 